Hello. 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 How are you? Hello. Oh, hello. Uh, I believe you left a message on the Cam 15 Hall answer phone the other day. Oh, yes, yes. Calm forth in Lancashire. Yes, yes. I, um, I'm looking at your book, Enjoy Life Forever, and I'm puzzled about chapter 39, God's View on Blood. My name is Robert. Robert Skinner, sir. Robert. Okay, mine's Martin. Yeah. Hello. What about sorry then, Robert? Oh, I'm quite some way to the south of you, but um, I've had difficulty getting through to Kingdom Halls. I think because it's a... Uh, when I've tried a landline number, I think the phone's just rung and rung. Yeah. I think yours was a mobile yeah. phone number. Um, uh, no, I can't to the answer phone at the Kingdom Hall. Oh, I see. Okay. Uh, yeah, I see. so I just picked it up from there. But, uh, yeah, nice. Okay. Uh, have you spoken to other Jehovah's Witnesses about this before? Um, I've spoken to Jehovah's Witnesses at the carts, yes. Um, when you used to have carts out on the street. And I've got some of your yeah. literature from you, including um, uh, What Can the Bible Teach Us? And now I've got the book Enjoy Life Forever. Um, I think we've probably spoken before, to be honest with you. I'm sorry, could you I just say that know. again? I think we've probably spoken before. Right. I think you've run this before. Um, well, I've been trying to, I've been looking at your literature and trying to learn more. Um, in this book, Enjoy Life Forever, what puzzles me, God's view of blood, is on page 165... It explains that blood has four constituent parts, blood plasma, white blood cells, platelets and red cells. I mean, there's a fifth part, which is water, right? Um, a fraction is basically when you just remove the water from each of those three constituent parts. So a fraction of plasma is just plasma with the water removed. Um, fraction of red blood cells would be red blood cells with the water removed what i find difficult is you say that christians can't have blood but if you split blood into its constituent parts plasma red blood cells white blood cells and platelets and then you remove the water so they become fractions you're, you're allowed to have everything that's in blood except you know only if you remove the water and, you know, I, I don't understand what's so sinful or wicked about the water in blood. Well, that's fair enough. I mean, I think last time we had quite a long discussion, to be honest, uh, Robert. And, I mean, basically, it boils down to, you know, our, our purpose is based on Matthew 24 and various other verses to share the good news of the kingdom with people. And what would you say your purpose is? Um, well, I want to obey Jehovah God, um, but I can only deal with one thing at a time. I don't want to jump onto something else. I do believe in the kingdom. I do believe that we should um, obey Jehovah God. But if a person is not allowed to have blood, why then do you say it's okay to split blood into its four constituent part parts? Plasma, white blood cells, red blood cells, and platelets. And if you split blood into these four parts and turn them into fractions by removing the water, though I don't see what's sinful about the water, then all of a sudden, by removing the water from these four fractions, you can have each of these four fractions. So if you have a, a bottle of blood, right, a bag of blood that's been donated in a blood transfusion, you're saying Christians can't have that. But if you remove the water and split that blood into its four parts, plasma, white blood cells, platelets and red blood cells, then Jehovah's Witnesses can have everything there that's in that blood except for the water. I mean, what's so sinful about the water in blood? Because you can have every yeah, other part your, of blood. What's your view on that, then? Well, that seems crazy to me. On? That seems inconsistent. I don't think there's anything sinful. No, I mean, your view on blood. What's your view on blood? Well, I, I try not to have a blood transfusion if I could help it, but if my life is at risk, yes, I would have a blood transfusion, and I don't see anything sinful well, about enough. having a blood transfusion. It's a personal 
final decision in front of the individual person, and that sounds still be fine. So, well, well, no, uh, no, 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 because if a Jehovah's Witness has a blood transfusion, they are yeah, just they, they, they are brother, they are brother. they are disfellowship. They're not allowed to be Jehovah's Witnesses anymore. Well, I mean, now, oh, now, what you're really interested in is not the beyond blood, but trying to take issue with Jehovah's Witnesses and their view. Um, uh, organizing themselves. And what what is your view on blood? What is your view on blood? Do you do you allow Christians to have blood transfusions or not? It's not up to me, Robert. I don't allow anybody or disallow anybody. I'll make a personal choice. Are you an elder? So that's, that's all that is down to it. Um, are you an elder, so, sir? Of course. Yes. So, have you have you ever dis, have you ever heard of the hospital liaison committee who go around to hospitals discouraging Jehovah's Witnesses from having blood transfusions? I mean, this is common knowledge. It's it's in the the press. Jehovah's uh, what, Witnesses what do not accept to, blood. I don't understand what you're trying to achieve. Here, is it Robert. is it true that blood that Jehovah's Witnesses could I finish my sentence achieve. before you interrupt? Is it true that Jehovah's Witnesses do not permit blood transfusions? Brother, I think you need to be more open in what you're trying to achieve here. I'm I'm trying yeah. to find out we what have, is your position. A, we've had a long. I, it doesn't sound to me like you really want to know the answer. It sounds to me that you know the answer. Well, as far as so, I know, uh, we've had a long discussion in the past, and I don't think we need to have another discussion because in the past, it all it ended up with was you picking holes in things going back hundreds of years. And, uh, but but I, this I leads to people's deaths. People people die because they don't have blood transfusions. Isn't that true? That there are people who have died because they've refused refused blood transfusions. Is it true that people have died because they've had blood transfusions? Pardon? Is it true that people have died because they've had blood transfusions? Um, I. Don't know. I yes, yes. I guess because in the nineteen eighties, certain blood in America was infected with AIDS. People who had AIDS in in America, you donate blood for money. So if you're short of money, you donate blood. And drug addicts who had AIDS donated blood. So yes, there are some cases in America of people who died because they accepted blood transfusions in the nineteen eighties, which was contaminated with blood. But that's not the same as your position. Your position is that you say that Jehovah forbids people to accept blood transfusions since 1945. Before 1945, Jehovah's Witnesses used to encourage blood transfusions. Um, I've got a scan of the Watchtower here. 1st of April, 1909, pages 116 to 117. And talking about blood, it says these prohibitions had never come to the Gentiles because they had never been under the law covenant. But so deeply rooted with the Jewish ideas on this subject that it was necessary to the peace of the church that the Gentiles should observe this matter also. Um, so this Watchtower article is talking about the situation in the early church. And it's, it's saying that the prohibition on blood was never something that was extended to, to Gentiles. Christians today, according to this Watchtower, aren't under some prohibition on blood. But you, you changed your position for some reason, I don't know why, in 1945. You banned blood transfusions in 1945. So, I mean, the problem here is that you're trying to take issue with uh, the, the, the the teachings of Jehovah's Witnesses, and you're, you're talking to the wrong person here, because whatever whatever we discuss today is not going to change anything, is it, with uh, Robert? So... I think, you know, we just need to leave it at that. But, um, but the teachings on... Whatever you say, is, is, yeah, but it's not going to change the teaching. Whatever we come, whatever decision we come to today, Robert, it's not going to change the teachings of Jehovah's Witnesses. But people die because they're Jehovah's Witnesses and they, they refuse a blood transfusion you know, when they need one. I, I, I would try to avoid a blood transfusion, OK? But if my life is in danger, I would accept a blood transfusion because there is nothing in the Bible that, that forbids um, blood. I mean, that Watchtower article I read, it is old, 1909, but it says that these prohibitions on blood were never made to the Gentiles. 
And the Jews who did break the commandment on blood, Leviticus 17 verses 13 to 15, says that if you broke the commandment on blood by eating blood, they didn't have blood transfusions in biblical times, all you had to do was to have a bath and wash your clothes, and you were unclean until evening, and then, after bathing in water, you went back into the congregation, clean, cleansed. So, in Jehovah's Witnesses, if you have a blood transfusion, you're disfellowshipped. No one will talk to you. Your whole family is barred from talking to you for the rest of your life. But look, Leviticus 17... To be, to be fair, though, to be fair, though, if someone becomes a Jehovah's Witness, they understand that beforehand, don't they? This is not a surprise to them. So people take a, a personal choice to be a Jehovah's Witness. That's up to them. They know that choice, and it's not something we spring on people out of the, out but, of the unknown. But, anyway, but your, I, but your I teaching... We just need to bring this... Rather, we need to bring this conversation to a close here because uh, yes, you're trying sir, to talk thank about you. something which is not really going to make any difference to the teachings of Jehovah's Well, it, 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 it does because it results in people's thing. deaths. People die because they refuse blood transfusion. But it says in Leviticus 17, 14, whoever eats it, meaning blood, shall be cut off. Verse 15, and every person who eats what died naturally or what was torn by beasts, whether he is a native of your country, own country, or a stranger, listen to this, he shall both wash his clothes and bathe in water and be unclean until evening. And then he will be clean. So that was the, the punishment for taking blood. You had a bath, you washed your clothes, and when you had your bath and you'd washed your clothes, you were now ritually clean and you went back into the congregation. That's entirely different from the teaching of Jehovah's Witnesses, that if you have a blood transfusion, you are barred for the rest of your life from the congregation by being disfellowshipped and you're not allowed to talk to your family. Have you ever been a Jehovah's Witness? No, never. No, thank goodness. Uh, what do you say? I appreciate your. I appreciate your. No, you don't. In what you're trying to do. No, you I, don't. Okay. That's a that's a whopper, isn't it? That's a real Thank whopper. You. you don't appreciate it at all. You're not here to discuss the Bible. You're you're like an ostrich okay. who's buried his head in the yeah. sand. Whatever the watchtower tells oh, you, uh, you accept time, blindly, and you don't that. look at any other point of view at all. So if, if, if anyone to comes along with a different brother, point of view, you like an ostrich, you stick your head in the sand. Well, but last time it took about an hour before it got to the point you started hurling insults. This time it's been a lot quicker. So I certainly want to close the conversation now. All right. Well, thank you very much for your, for your time, sir. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye-bye. Carnforth in Lancashire. C-A-R-N-F-O-R-T-H.